Ok, 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 on est bon, on est bon, on est bon. Ok. Hello and welcome to the final tutorial of this implementation. Indeed, this is the final code section we have to implement now. And it's of course about replacing the chain by the longest chain if we need, that is, if the chain is not up to date. So we'll make that final request. It will be, according to you, which type of request? Well, it will be a GET request because basically we'll have nothing to post to send that kind of request. And then we'll do another very quick implementation, which will be the JSON file containing all the nodes we want our blockchain to have. That is, you know, all the nodes address that we put in this JSON file that is exactly the file posted when we send this connect node request. But in order to keep track of all our nodes, you know, when we want to add some new ones, well, we should make this separate JSON file containing all the nodes of our network. And that's exactly what we'll do in the next tutorial when making the separate implementation and then we'll be good for the demo. All right, so let's make that final request right now, replacing the chain by the longest chain if needed. And actually the good news is that this request will be very similar to this one. You know, this one checking if the blockchain is valid because basically we'll use another function here, which will give us a Boolean true or false. And then same will make an if else condition, which will return two different messages. So what I'm going to do to make it efficiently is I'm going to select all this and paste it here. And you're going to see we'll have very few things to change. So first, what do we need to change? Of course, the name of the request. It is no longer going to be is valid but let's say replace chain. All right, that will be the name of our request. Then is it going to be a get or post request? Well, as we said, it's going to be a get request because we have nothing to post. Then the function here is not going to be is valid, of course, but we can call it also replace chain. All right, and then you're gonna see. So the first thing we wanna do is getting this Boolean true or false, whether the chain needs to be replaced and to have this Boolean. Well, again, good news. We have a method that will give us exactly this Boolean. Remember the replace chain method not only replaces a chain that is not the longest one by the longest one, but also returns true or false. It returns true if the chain needs to be replaced. That is if the chain is not the longest one and it returns false if the chain is the longest one, that is, if it doesn't need to be replaced. And therefore, the first thing we're going to do here is get this Boolean that we're going to call is chain replaced, which will be equal to true if the chain needs to be replaced and equal to false if the chain doesn't need to be replaced, that is, if it's the longest one. And so here, instead of calling the method is chain valid, well, we will, of course, call our replace chain method. And same, of course, we call this method from our blockchain object. And then does this method take an argument? Well, let's check. This method doesn't take any argument, just self here, but that's just because it's a method of our object. So all good, we don't need to input any arguments here. So I'm removing this and there we go. We have our Boolean. So this Boolean is chain replace tells if yes or no, we need to replace the chain. And therefore what we're gonna do now is depending on the value of this Boolean, is chain replaced? Well, we will return two different messages. If true, we'll say that indeed the nodes had different chains, so the chain was replaced. Because remember that this replace chain method not only returns this Boolean, but also replaces the chain if it was not the longest one, if it was not the most up to date one. So we already have our chain replaced here if it was needed, so all good. But now we want to return two different messages. If the Boolean is true, well, the message will be the nodes had different chains, so the chain was replaced by the longest one. And here, if the Boolean is false, the message will be all good. The chain is the largest one. All right, so let's do this. Let's not forget to change the Boolean here. It's not is valid, but is chain replaced. All right, so if is chain replaced equals true, well, the response will be, as we said, a message saying that the node had different chains. So the chain was replaced 
by the longest one. Great, so that in case is chain replace equals true. And on the other hand, if is chain replace equals false, well, in that case, the message will be all good. The chain is the largest one. Perfect. All good, the chain is the largest one. And now, if you want just to improve this, we can add an extra information besides the message. In the first response here, in case the chain was replaced, well, we could add an extra key here, for example, new chain displaying the new chain. You know, since it was replaced, we would like to see by which chain it was replaced and that would allow us to see the most up-to-date chain. And on the other hand, for the other response where the chain was not replaced, well, we could still display our chain, that is the actual chain that didn't need to be replaced, but it would be just nice to see it. So therefore, I'm going to add here another key. And to do this, let's not forget to add a comma here to separate these keys. And let's give a name to this new key because it's like a key identifier. And so the name of this key could be new chain. And there we go here. We need to enter the variable that will give us this new chain and this new chain. Well, how do we get it? It's actually a good exercise. Please press pause on the video and try to return this new chain before I do it. Okay, I'm going to do it now. So here we go to get this new chain. Well, we take our object and since we applied the replace chain method on our object, well, that means that the chain of our object was replaced by the largest one, by the most up to date one. And since a variable of our object is chain, well, that means that we simply need to take our object and then this chain variable. And since it was just replaced, well, this will give us the largest chain, that is the new chain here. So the trick was just to take our object, block chain, and then chain, the variable of the object. All right, so congrats if you did this. And now for the second response, well, let's also display the actual chain, which wasn't replaced, but still it could be useful to see it. And to get it, well, that's exactly the same. You know, we simply need to get our blockchain object first and then its chain variable. And okay, it wasn't replaced, but that's exactly the same thing. All right, so that's it. The replace chain request is made. We return the response the same way using the JSONify function and then the 200 HTTP status code saying that everything's okay. All right, so wow, one final step to do now. The JSON file, it's actually going to be very quick and easy, you'll see. We'll just need to input the addresses of the node in a dictionary and then eventually we will be ready for the demo. So I can't wait to show you this. I will send some ad coins to Kirill. He's going to be super happy and I hope you'll be happy as well to see our blockchain in action.